It is said that history becomes legend as its events recede into the mists of time, and that memories grow dimmer in the slumber of peace. Thus, the noble peoples of Yurak languished in a thousand years of peaceful splendor, growing forgetful of the dark time their land once knew, heedless of the ancient enemy who yet labored in silence. And so Golgoth, the terrible god of death, beheld that the world was ripe for an era of terror and blood. He summoned Balkoth, the most evil of his sorcerers, and bestowed upon him a mighty artifact of power, that the necromancer might better serve his master in heralding the coming days of darkness. The wings of Balkoth's wretched steed beat the air like thunder. The land shook beneath the rumor of his mustering host. The air was filled with cries of his victims. Who can say what new perils may yet befall as they struggle to defeat the ancient evil, to reunite the land, and to become Lords of Magic. Oh my fucking god. I mean, am I just nostalgic or do they don't do video game introductions like they used to? Oh my god, this game. Holy shit. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mangus, and today I take you guys with me on a very personal and nostalgic journey. We're going 20 years back in time to the first computer game I ever played. As a child, I got this from my grandmother during Christmas. She probably just picked a random game off the shelf. Uh, she probably didn't even know what she was buying, but holy shit, am I glad that this ended up being the first game I played. Because, in my opinion, this game, released by Sierra in 1997, I was 8 years old. I was 8 years old when I first got this. Is a jewel. It's a masterpiece of a strategy game. It's absolutely fantastic. It didn't sell nearly as much as it should. Almost nobody have ever heard of, about it. It is so underappreciated. And in my opinion, it was years ahead of its time when it came to strategy and depth. This game has so much depth to it. It's insane to think to think that this game is over 20 years old. Uh, it boggles my mind. So, ladies and gentlemen, this game I sank so many hours into this game. I, I didn't even understand English at the time. I was eight years old, and yet I somehow managed to figure this game out over hundreds of hours. I broke two CDs. I, I went and rebought this game twice because I destroyed two CDs. That's how much I played it. Um, and I think this game laid the foundations for why I ended up loving strategy games. If I were to compare this game to any other games, it would probably be Heroes of Might and Magic. I think they 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 pulled a lot of inspiration off Heroes 1, because I think Heroes 1 came out three years prior. I'm pretty sure Heroes 1 came out in 1995. I don't remember. Don't don't quote me on that though. Because I do see elements of Heroes of Might and Magic in Lords of Magic, but it is still a very original game. I still haven't played anything like it since. It's very, very unique. And it, it is also punishingly hard. It is so hard. It is so difficult, guys. This game raped me <laughs> as a child. It molested me. That's how hard it was. So, ladies and gentlemen, prepare for the best narrator of all times. Please select your leader type. This guy gives me chills down my spine whenever he speaks. So, the first thing we do, this game has many different classes and many different factions. The first thing you do is you select your lord. This is you. If you die, the game is over. And you can, of course, select between the classical trio archetype of warrior, mage, and thief. Now, for beginners, I always recommend warrior. Because warrior gives you a really strong hero that can fight really well, and he's very easy to use. There's not really much complexity about him whatsoever. Um, Thief is very advanced and very difficult to pull off, because they're very weak, but they can do a lot of really cool shit like steal, and, and they're really advanced. But the most advanced class to play, without a shadow of a doubt, is the mage, because they start out incredibly weak, but spells are really, really powerful in this game. It, is, it's, it isn't called Lords of Magic for no reason. So, I think... 
I'm actually worried I'm not gonna be able to pull this off because it's really that hard. I can't believe I played this as an eight-year-old. I have no idea how I managed to do it. I must have just been really smart as a kid. <laughs> or maybe I just got dumber, I don't know. Uh, let's try the mage. The circle of life has no beginning or end. Oh, the sky, the sky. Choose your faith and write your own destiny. So, in this game, you have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight factions. They all represent the elements, uh, aside from two, which I'll get into. Um, actually, aside from four. There are four elemental teams, and uh, I'll just go through them all, really. Um, they each have their own units. Uh, basically, there are eight different ways to play this game. Uh, Worships order. You got the humans of order. They're like very medieval style. They got like knights and and swordsmen and crossbowmen. They're very like they're they're basically medieval humans. Worship, worships. Fire. You got fire. They're sort of they got sort of like a demonic thing going on. Uh, they got demons and they also got some humans. Uh, you know that run around bare chested with big swords and they're like. If I were to compare them to anyone, it would be chaos from Warhammer essentially. Then you got life. They're basically the high elves, essentially. That's 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 how you describe them. They run around with bows and they ride on ponies and shit. Worships earth. And you got the dwarves of earth. They're really sturdy. They're really strong. They're slow as fuck. They run around with dwarves, essentially, and axe axes. They got they got they got big axes. Worships chaos. And you got the, the another human faction. Actually, they're 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 human. They're they're the barbarians. They're the polar opposite to order. Um, and each faction has has a polar opposite, as you can see. Um, yeah, they're basically barbarians. Shamans. They ride around on beasts. They're pretty cool, actually. Very very difficult to play that. Worships water. They got the Amazons of water. They got sort of like a lizard man theme style going on. They got a lot of creatures that can move on water. They got like the Kraken and, and shit like that. Re really cool faction. Worships. Then you got the prime antagonists of the game, the death uh, faction. You can't play as them. Uh, you have to beat the game before, because they're, they're essentially the enemies of the game. Uh, once you beat the game, you can play as death. Uh, you can't do it uh, until you actually beat them. And they're they're sort of like dark elves, if I were to give a, give a comparison. Dark elves with necromancers mixed in. They got like skeletons and vampires and shit. Then you got ear. Uh, they're sort of like angels, I suppose you could say. They got like storm giants and eagles and uh, yeah they're, they're pretty cool they're really difficult to play though they're they they die very quickly <laughs> essentially so yeah you got all of these uh, factions they all have a polar opposites Worships and they're all factions in their own way kind of like civilization you have to maintain diplomatic relations and shit it's really really cool so and also if you go over to warrior you'll get to see the different they you get a different lore depending on your class so for example the humans they have a paladin uh, if you select a thief, they have like a Robin Hood Ranger slash type guy. So there's so many heroes you can play, you, you can see their stats and everything. This game is so fucking complex, you got like a high elf archer babe right here. Um, I really really like the paladin, but I think we're gonna go with the wizard for now. So I'm gonna go on hard because I... Like, trust me, this game is hard on easy. This, it will probably rape you on easy. I played mostly easy when I was a kid. Um, hard is just, I'm, I'm, I can't really guarantee that I'll be able to, to, to get past the first week, to be quite honest, because this game is super hard on hard. And I always named this guy Gandalf, because honestly, that's who he was inspired by. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, this game just throws you right into it. It's, there's like no... There, there, there's no tutorial or anything, there's just some text you can read. So what I like to do is I like to turn up the game speed a little bit. And then I like to turn the ambience down a little bit. Turn the music down a little bit, there we go. The music in this game is absolutely impeccable, and as you can see, uh, this game has like... It, it looks a lot like Heroes of Might and Magic or Civilization on first glance. You got your, like, your overland map theme. Uh, and uh, of course, this is how far you can move in one day. The green blobs represent movement essentially. And we are on day one right now. Here's your city. You can't really do much with it yet. It's level zero. Uh, you got a barracks right here. Where you can train heroes. Footmen, they're, they're your basic infantry. You got knights. Uh, they're the cavalry. You got warships. They're not really going to be useful yet. 
you got your thieves guild here you can recruit rangers you can recruit crossbowmen and hounds they're basically scouts you got the mage tower here you can recruit wizards that can cast spells and i love the voices i i i really love the voices in this game it's so good voice acting and they can recruit white, white stags they're essentially magical creatures cost magic crystals might as well go over very quickly how the uh how the resources work in this game essentially you got you got five resources you got gold which you use to recruit archers you got ale which is essentially food and you got magic crystals which you use for everything magical you got followers which will come to your city once a week uh you can use them to train your units and put them to work and then you got fame fame is essentially how famous you are the more fame you are you have the more followers you attract you you can gain fame by doing deeds such as clearing out buildings and winning great battles, but you can also lose fame if you do things that are dishonorable, such as not paying your mercenaries. Uh, if you recruit guys and you're not able to, to pay for them, you lose fame as a result of being a bad leader. And here you can see your diplomatic relations with everyone. Again, this game is so complex. Can you believe this game is 20 years old? It was so far ahead of its game, of its time. It's insane. Here you can like see your diplomatic relations with everyone. Uh, you can see with life we have empathy, fire we have aversion, neutral hostility, distaste, trust. There's so many different factions and uh, so much going on here. And I'll, I'll get into all of this. This is just like, uh, sorry if I'm going, if I'm rushing ahead. I'm just giving you guys a very, very fast overview of the game, and then I'll go more into detailed uh, or advanced details as we as we move on. So here are our dudes. Here's our main lord, Gandalf the Wizard Lord. I always called him Gandalf. <laughs> it's like I have to call them the same things I called him as an eight-year-old. Uh, we got a squad of in infantry right here, the footmen. You can see their attack right here. They have 10 attacks, 6 defense, 51 health, 12 movements. They don't got mana because they're not spellcasters. And this essentially right here represents their uh, how much damage they do. The uh, topmost number is how much damage they do or how far they can shoot. And the lower number is how much damage they do. And then you got uh, strength, agility, and wisdom. I never really figured out what, what these three things does, if they have any impact on their combat abilities whatsoever. I'm pretty sure Wisdom is related to spell points somehow, but yeah. Still, 20 years later, there are things about this game that I still don't understand, to be quite honest, because there's no tutorial or anything online. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's show you guys some combat, shall we? So all of these uh, houses that you see here with grey flags are basically uh, houses occupied by the enemy. And uh, you essentially, your job is to clear out some of these buildings to get experience and money. And level 2, I'm not sure if I'd like to go in here. This hermitage was abandoned when a party of fiends was sighted in an nearby area. It is rumored to have a very large underground chamber. So yeah, some of these dungeons actually have multiple levels you can explore further down. But level 2 sounds a little bit too ambitious for me right now. So I'm gonna see if I can find a level 1 dwelling instead. Because, um, no, definitely not level 4. How about this brewery right here? So, this is a brewery. Uh, if you capture a brewery, brewery you get uh, ale per turn equal to the brewery's level. So, if we capture this brewery, we get two ale per turn. So, essentially, it's, an, it's a resource income, essentially. Long a source of good ale, this uh, brewery fell to a gang of fiends many years ago. So, we can try a level 2, but our army is very weak right now. As you can see, our lord is level 3, our footman is level 2, and our crossbowmen are level 1. So... And we don't really have any money to recruit any additional forces right now. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be feisty. I'm gonna see if I can go for the uh, for the brewery. So this is the combat screen right here. Okay, this seems pretty good. We got a pack of goblins. We got a mite and an imp. These two are really, really simple to deal with. They're scouts, they die really easily. These goblins can be a little bit nasty though. So... Scrolling is a little bit weird. Uh, again, this game is old. I'm surprised I can even run it. So, your units comes in squads of three. Um, as long as you keep one of them alive, you can heal them up back. And uh, we're gonna start off by, by casting some spells. As you can see right here, we got leadership, we target this. Everyone in army gains one attack. We can cast a uh, Righteous Bolt, this does damage. I really like this one, Righteous Cause. It's a buff, essentially, that gives the unit uh, plus four attack, two ranged armor, and one armor. So it makes them a lot stronger. Enemies will sometimes stand still, sometimes they'll charge you. It varies a little bit, but I actually kind of like it when they stand still, because then we can actually get the jump on them. So we're gonna start by shooting on this goblin. Get our footmen into a position. I think we're gonna cast leadership to give them some attack and we're gonna cast righteous cause on this guy 
to make him a little bit stronger. So you can either Berserk, defend, or attack. When you defend, you go into a defensive stance. When you Berserk, you do more damage, but you forgo your defense. Or you can just normally attack, which is what I think I'm going to do right now. Now, the pathing of this game is a little bit weird. And you want to be really careful, because the enemy will try to take out your ranged units. And naturally, you, you want to keep your wizard far away from combat, because he dies really fast. But still, I think that the, the, the this game is really, really well done. And even 20 years later, it's still fun to play. So this had turned out to be pretty fucking easy. Um, I thought it was going to be much harder than that. So now we're getting two ales per uh, turn, and that is really good, because we need ale to recruit here. units. New students all the time. Now, when you hire units, you can choose between training them yourself, um, that costs a follower, so you need followers in your capital, we have zero right now. Uh, and that costs, their upkeep is very, very uh, low when you train them. Or you can hire mercenaries, it costs much less initially, but they cost a lot per turn. Hiring mercenaries is not something you want to do in the long term, because you simply cannot afford the upkeep. It's much better to train them yourself, um, but of course, then we need followers. And uh, in order to get followers, we'll need to liberate a great temple that's up here somewhere. That's really, really hard to do, and we can't do it yet. I'll tell you guys more about the Great Temple later, but for now, uh, just know that we'll need to um, we'll need to train up our army before we can do that. So that's essentially how you end the turn. You saw that the crystals were going around this little circle in the middle right here. That represents each faction taking their turn. You can see all the factions around here. Uh, so, and you also heal up. Uh, every turn, and even more so if you are inside a building. So you want to always start to end your turn inside a building so you can get some healing, essentially. So we got our brewery, our brewery, brewery, I think that's how it's pronounced, on the first turn. That's pretty good. Um, you can also cast spells on the Overland map. Uh, this one in particular is called Falcon Sai. When you cast it, you consume your remaining movement, so you can do it at the end of your turn. Boom! You uh, explore a little bit. It's uh, really nice to have, actually. So as you can see right here, water, death, air, and then order. So they all take their turns. And uh, so I think, actually, I feel feisty enough to take on a level two large estates. Now this doesn't give you anything. Um, okay, so it looks okay. This one's actually a lot more nasty. We got goblin archers. We got goblin uh, footmen. This is gonna be tricky. So. And they're not doing anything, which is fantastic. Let's see, we have seven mana. Uh, righteous Cause cost four mana. I think we'll cost Righteous Cause on this guy. Then we'll cost Leadership. So we took one arrow from that goblin right there, and... Oh, crap. Yeah, so that this is high ground. It's not very well uh, telegraphed, but our arrows will not do anything right here. So a high ground advantage is very, very important for archers. You can also dodge projectiles if you're fast. It's pretty hard to do, but you can do it. Alright. So as you can see, units die really quickly in this game. They die insanely quickly in this game, so you gotta baby them like crazy. Now, as I said, it doesn't matter if you lose one footman. They will actually reach. Oh my god. Yeah, he... If your lord dies, it's game over. It's immediately game over. So, um, you can actually continue further down if you want to uh, by going down here. Um, but I am not interested in doing that right now because that's going to be very hard. So I'm just going to leave. I can come back later though if I want to. So I think for now, um, we will find ourselves a nice little place to hide in and we shall heal up before the next fight essentially. Because uh, you always want to be on full health. Now, sadly, this game does have quite a bit of waiting. That is uh, one of the um, main like complaints I have about it. There's a lot of sitting around and waiting for your turn to end. Now, while you're waiting for your turn to end, you can go into your capital. You can trade and shit like that. And, you know, you can also read up on units. It's a lot of things you can do while, wa while waiting for your turn, so... Uh, I like to just sit and look at the other uh, other people's uh, military strength, essentially. You can see their military power right here. Death is usually really powerful. Uh, where is Death? There we go. Yeah, he's really high up. Compared to us, you can see he starts with a lot of shit. You can also see your spells right here. In order to get more information, you gotta spy on them using a thief. 
Uh, I'll get more into that later on in this Let's Play, because that's pretty complicated. Um, but yeah, this... Uh, like, I think that this game is so well designed for its time. It is really, really good. Even though it's really clunky, uh, 20 years later, it's still entertaining, and it still has so much depth. And listen to this music, just listen to it! This is just one of the factions. Each of the factions have their own music, and they're all fucking insanely beautiful to listen to. And let's go to the small outpost. Ooh, level one. This should be pretty easy. Now, you can auto-calculate the battle. Uh, it will simply auto-calculate it for you and just do a rough estimate. I don't like using auto-calc because it seems like you get less experience when you do it. Uh, this is... I have no way to confirm this, but it seems to be the case. Anyway, I guess I'll show you guys the Righteous Bolts. Are these all archers? Oh my god. Alright, then I won't use Righteous Bolts. I'm gonna use Righteous Cause. Uh, actually, I can still I can still use the bolts. So this is the bolts. It's pretty simple. Boom, does damage. Really, nothing more to it than that. So I gotta be really careful here because archers really fucking hurt in this game. Now I think there is a way you can select just one, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. So you can. If you if you click on on all three of them and right click the other guy, you can select just one dude. Um, it's a little bit oh shit, our crossbowman just went down. Luckily, archers are pretty weak in uh, close combat, so they die pretty quickly once once they enter once they enter the fray. <laughs> you can see how quickly units go down in this game. It's pretty stupid, but it makes it a lot of fun because you have to baby the shit out of your forces essentially. So it's going pretty well. Um, our crossbowmen are about to level up. Uh, our footmen are quite a far away, but our lord is about to level up as well. And leveling up makes a lot of difference. Your lord can reach level 12. Uh, your main units can reach level 5. And each level has so much impact on how good they are in combat. Like, it, the difference between level 1 and level 2, they almost get twice as strong. So it takes a long time to level them up, but it's very, very important that you do so. Um, I do believe the Great Temple is somewhere over here. I know the map pretty well, since I played it for hundreds and hundreds of hours. We're still gonna stick around and heal up a little bit. I still don't know what these sounds are. The sounds you just heard. I think they are when enemies cast outward spells, but I, I've never been able to confirm this. I think they might also just be aesthetical sounds. I don't know. So, a level 2 gold mine. Let's go check it out. I never read the text. It's pretty fucking generic. Alright, let's let's check it out. So, we got more goblins. More goblin archers. Well, lovely. I don't know if there's a way to increase the scroll speed. I don't think so. Yes, yes, I'm coming. So they're not doing anything. Yes. Which means yes, uh Which means we can get the jump on them. That's great. Now this game was so much slower back when I played it, because my computer could hardly run it. Uh, I remember... <laughs> I remember like it took for fucking ever to walk, because the game was so slow. Alright, let's do a leadership, and uh, let's buff up this guy with Righteous Calls, and have him lead the charge. And now they've actually decided to move on, so what you can actually do is you can defend on your way to the archers. When you defend, you take half of your attack stat and you add it to your defense stat, essentially. So that means that 6 attack is not added to defense, now they have 12 defense instead. That's essentially how I figured out how it worked, and I do believe someone online confirmed it. As you can see, they're much more durable when you use the defense formation. There we go. So, however, you do need to switch to attack when you get close. I don't worry, you, you don't you don't just fight goblins in this game. You do fight a lot a variety of enemies, but for before the early game, you fight mostly orcs and goblins. The goblins aren't actually part of any particular faction. They're actually neutral. So, there we go. They're dead. Ah, nice! So, we just leveled up, and this is fantastic. So, when you level up, you get your hero gets more mana, he gets better stats. Well, the wizard hardly gets better stats, because he's really fucking weak. But as you can see, these crossbowmen, they just got more defense, they got more hit points, they got more better range. And our footmen are about to level up as well, so... Um, I do believe we can also get a crystal cave somewhere around here. 
um, which will give us magic crystals. Magic crystals are very essential. But it's always nice to capture your mines early, because when you capture your mines early, you get you start working on your income, and your income is also very, very, very essential. Uh, I guess I can show you guys the Great Temple. Should be around here somewhere. Oh, I, almost, I, I, I just split up my army right here. You can split up your army if you want to. Ah, there it is. Oh, look, we have a red, renegade band of goblins walking around. Yeah, so you will see uh, renegade. They're kind of like barbarians in Civ. They got a gray flag. If they enter one of your buildings, they will destroy it, and you'll need to repair it. Yeah, marauding parties. And I think there's... Yeah. We're in the need of supplies, and we thirst for battle and blood. <laughs> they will attack you, and they, they usually have a little bit of dialogue with you as they attack. Which is cute. It's pretty cute, actually. So, uh, it's nice. Uh, you can also... I, I do believe you can trade with them, or trade with some of them. I actually don't remember. And right, we're gonna do our standard buffing. I just buffed the guy with low health. That was actually not fantastic. Also, I forgot to use the defend command. There we go. I'm actually gonna issue some orders. It's it's a little bit annoying to issue orders in this game sometimes. They they don't always do exactly what you do uh, or what you want them to do, which is really fucking annoying. But yeah, essentially, guys, here's the great temple. Uh, this is what we need to liberate. It's really hard. Uh, once you liberate the Great Temple, you'll level up your main city to level 1, and you'll start attracting followers. And these followers are very essential, because you can put them to work in the capital to generate resources. You also need followers to train units. You can train heroes. This is a paladin. You can train him. He's a one guy. He will level up. And you can also tra train footmen and knights. Cavalry are very good in this game. They also cost a shit ton of uh, resources, as you can see right here. So, there is no way, absolutely no way, we can liberate this great temple with our current forces. I'm just gonna show you guys. Just, just, um... I'm gonna show you guys, before we end this first part, just how d dangerous this temple is. As you can see right here, we got panthers, trolls, orcs. We also got a hero right here, a necromancer. He just cast a buff spell. Visage of Horror. I... I think that increases attack and defense. Yeah, let's, I'm just gonna show you guys what happens if you try to attack a building with uh, too many forces in, them, in it. You get horribly fucking owned. Oh, that's nice, we can actually do a uh, Righteous Bolt. Let's um, target this guy. Yeah, we are getting absolutely fucking massacred. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gandalf, uh, I hope you, I hope you made your, I hope you made your peace. <laughs> we raised the skeleton. <laughs> Say, so yeah, here's Balkov. He's the main villain of this game. Whenever a lord dies, you get this little cutscene where Balkov and Golgoth laugh at you, and they go like, ha 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 So you get this uh, you get the cinematic when an any other lord dies. So for example, if the Lord of Life suddenly, suddenly dies, then this cinematic will start playing, and life will be eliminated, essentially, until all of the lords are gone, or until Balkov is defeated. So that's essentially the, uh, the premise of this game. You can just do a restart, though. So, you can see that the Great Temple is far beyond what we have uh, the capabilities of doing right now. It's level 5, so... Um, we'll, we'll need to train up our forces quite a bit more and probably hire some mercenaries as well. I like to actually recruit a stag. Because stags are pretty good, they only cost crystals. They can't level up, but they got pretty good stats, and you can buff them. So I like to recruit a stag and probably hire some mercenaries. But you will also find many Some crossbowmen. But for that, we need more resources. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to end this part right here. Let me know, did you guys enjoy this? Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and, uh, you know, it's, it's an old game. It's an old, clunky, outdated game, but I'd love to do a full Let's Play of this Order campaign, and maybe even do other lords as well, because this game is very dear to me. It is one of my favorite games of all time, and it I credit this game for everything that I ended up being interested in, games-wise. 
And I think this game needs a lot more exposition. It's available on Steam, just search for Lords of Magic if you have. I'm currently running Windows 10 and I can run it just fine. Not sure how it works on other operative systems, but yeah, I, you should really go check it out. It's, it's like, I think I paid like, what, $5 for it or something? It's super cheap. It, it costs nothing. So, ladies and gentlemen, please leave a like and a comment. Tell me what you what you thought about this game. Did you enjoy it? Do you want to see more of it? I'd love to hear your feedback on this game. Um, and as always, my name is Inmanx, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.